Robert R. Pranounda, Chrysler. Welcome to another Flames of War Battle Report. Uh, this video is the start of a new series uh, I'm going to be doing, so it's basically uh, going over the D Day starter sets and um, the example forces that you'll find um, in the, your respective books. So basically, each list uh, will be having three games against uh, the other D Day starter sets, and um, <clears throat> we'll keep track of the scores uh, using VPs to see if there's an overall uh, better example force and what we'll do as well every uh, game we'll say what we think uh, would be a bit better um, and what we'll do this one starting off as you can see is going to be the Vafen SS and the British and I'll be using the Vafen SS and Richard will be using the British so it'll be interesting games because uh, um, they're a bit weak uh, sometimes on uh, formation strength uh, but I should come uh, make it a fun game as well Okay, so here is the Waffen uh, SS uh, D-Day starter set uh, example list uh, that Battlefront give us in the book. So we have one formation, a Panther formation. So we have a two SS Panthers as the HQ. Then we have a unit of three and two Tigers. Uh, so that is the formation. Uh, also in the box, you have the two um, 8.8 centimeter tank enters, so these are the big AA guns, and we also have two Pumas and uh, a 250 scout troop, so that is two with five centimeter guns and one with just MGs. And also, you have a uh, SS um, recon platoon, just five bases, but these do end up having five of the 250 half tracks. Now, that's what you get in the box. Battlefront recommend a the 10-4 AAs. Now I don't have them set up as the infantry guns, uh, but you can set them up as the half tracks, and then you can use it as a point then to make them armoured, so uh, pesky infantry teams and artillery can't get rid of them really easily. And they've also got a lucky card. So the two purchases on top of uh, the starter set is this box and a lucky card. Now, um, also what you can do. I'm not going to do it because uh, I'm going to try and follow the example force as much as possible. Um, these, when they're equipped as trucks, can be in the formation with the Panthers, and I, I think that would be the best thing to do, since it makes your formation that a little bit stronger, it stops them breaking. Um, so I'll use these as trucks, uh, but um, if you feel I should stick rigidly to the example list in these uh, D-Day start set playthroughs, uh, I'll go back to them and they're roughly about the same size of the infantry base um, but um, bear in mind anyone starting up and you're following this example force you can add them if they're trucks to the formation and I personally I think that would be better and then you can ditch your lucky card to make them armoured Uh, this is the British example force from the D-Day book, so we have a Desert Rat Cromwell uh, squadron. So we just have a HQ uh, with one Cromwell on his own, and then we have two troops with two Cromwells and a Sherman Firefly. And in the formation we also have four Stuarts, and that is it for the formation. Uh, still included in the box we have three Churchill Crocodiles, two M10 Achilles, three Universal Carriers, four 25 pounders and a full um, seven man paratrooper platoon with an additional piat and that is what you get in the starter set and they recommend to supplement this with a um, daimler squadron so that will be two daimlers uh, two dingoes and then the lucky cards for a point so that's two more purchases command cards and the daimlers um when um British came out, D-Day, uh, it was actually starting for scratch for me, so I actually bought two starter sets. Not too bad for what you get, because then you get to fill out the M10 Achilles, you can fill out your um, Cromwell platoons a bit more, and have another one. Um, Stuarts you could always sell to a friend, and also the 25 pounders, and then you're not far off there and starting to build up a nice decent company of uh, paratroopers. Um, so, um, what I'd say maybe, um, get another box of uh, Cromwells maybe because you've got already got two units with uh, Racky, um in this list 
uh, but that's my opinion. I Well, we're going to try these, so these guys are going to get three games against the SS, the regular German D-Day and then uh, uh, blue on blue against the Americans, so we will make a conclusion at the end what uh, force could do with each, so basically. Uh, so those are the two lists, so we'll have a look at the map for today. So here's today's mission. We used the mission matrix to decide uh, me go and attack and Richard go and manoeuvre and then we rolled and I had the highest so I was the attacker in contact which is the rebrand of hasty attack in the new uh, missions that they've done. So not too bad for me. I have immediate reserves and they're not scattered uh, but Richard will have ambush and uh, it will be uh, some sort of 17 pounder waiting for me uh, so I need to be careful where I push up with uh, my heavy tanks. So here's today's table, uh, so we've got plenty of uh, line, uh, line of sight blocking terrain here which will be nice for the game. We've got a bocage section over here with some fields in the middle and some trees, a uh, little barn over here and then we have a little farm complex. Uh, some more trees and some hills uh, block up some more line of sight and then we have like a little bit of a town with a church. So three buildings and then you've got your little church. So plenty of terrain. I always find this better. Uh, you obviously have to work around it but uh, then that is warfare. You have to use the terrain to your advantage. Uh, so there. So um, I'm going to be the attacker in this mission. We've already rolled up. Uh, so Richard will be picking uh, where he's going to be defending. So as I've already gone over I get immediate scattered reserves and he gets delayed scattered reserves uh, and he also gets ambush. So no doubt there's going to be at least something with a 17 pounder in ambush. So my uh, panthers don't look so big and scary now and I've also not had the best of luck with panthers. Um, in my games especially the SS ones that really uh, backfired on me so hopefully I can turn that around and I know Tom is probably eagerly watching because we all know Tom loves a good panther. Okay, so we've deployed. Uh, Richard uh, chose to be defending this side, so I'm attacking from here. So we'll do my deployment first. So my uh, pumas pushed up as far as they could go with the spearhead just to get some cover. My uh, These are, I'm going to be using them as two centimetre A again. So probably when I do the introduction, I will say they're two centimetres. And then during the army recap, I'll say they're ten fours because it all gets filmed at different points. But uh, no, I'll keep to the example force in the game. Uh, and then we have the two AAs, and then my 250 scouts pushed up just to let the pum uh, the Panthers get up to the uh, Bacage, because I might be able to cross over and have a pop at uh, some Sherman, uh, Sherman Firefly, who's got exposed, or, yeah, so I'll have to jump up a bit, oh, actually. I will check my deployment again, because I might actually be able to get in that uh, corridor, so if Richard lets me, because uh, the spearhead bubble is 8 inches, um, it's just how close I can get to the deployment zone. And then we have the 250 recce, and they're all mounted up. So in front of me, we have the British paratroopers who are not going to give up the objective lightly. And then, as you already seen, a Cromwell troop. And then we have the Stuarts, 25-pounders, the and then a Daimler troop on the hill. So in reserve for Richard, we have the Crocs, another Cromwell troop, Cromwell HQ and the Universal Carriers, but he does have two M10s somewhere in ambush on the table. For me, I have two Tiger 1s and the two Panther HQs. So I will uh, be able to um, have first chance to bring stuff on because I have immediate reserve. So I will check to see if I can get these into the lane and uh, then we'll roll. Nope, that's as far as they get. So uh, we'll be going into SS turn 1. Okay, so turn one, good luck Richard, yep, and I have you. my first dice reserve, so turn one, I have one roll, I need a five up, and I get it, but, oh. where, but where are they coming from? I think I will bring in the HQs first, and they are coming where I like on the back edge, so that'll be nice, so going into movement, turn one. And I didn't need to do that because my ones aren't scattered, so there we go. Uh, so I will be bringing them exactly the way I wanted to. You so, just passed it to see I was away. Yes, Richard is very alert. <laughs> okay, summary of SS movement over here. The 250 uh, transports have moved up. 
Uh, hopefully I'm in range to hose down some of the paratroopers, um, maybe get a pin on them if I'm lucky. Uh, don't forget uh, Richard put foxholes, gone to ground markers on them and on the guns as well. Uh, the 250 scouts no longer needing their spearhead bubble, I'm moving around to support my left. All the Panthers have uh, managed to get through the Bacar, so that's nice. HQ Panthers has moved here, so he is dashed, so he can grant some rerolls and better skills. And this guy has just done a tactical, so you can have a try and have a pop at the Daimler. So we are considering them cresting, so uh, they are going to be concealed up there, but I can see them just. And so th these guys, so but it's going to be difficult to hit them. And then over here, the Pumas have just moved up flush uh, to this section here, so... Uh, yeah, that's what we've done. So now we're going to shoot in and uh, we'll do some shooting and we'll stay, try and keep these ones to last and uh, see if we can uh, pop off a firefly. Okay, so so far uh, these guys have managed to kill one of the paratroopers, not uh, one short of pinning though, so that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, obviously I haven't fired these panthers yet. Uh, this panther almost got a hit on the Daimlers. Uh, these uh, big AA guns though had to fire their shots. I managed to pop a Daimler needing sevens to hit and then uh, Richard was unfortunately enough couldn't swap it. So these guys are long range, uh, there's concealment and obviously these guys have gone to ground so there's going to be sevens and they didn't blitz move uh, so that's going to be three shots needing sevens. No, not even add it to seven. So that is my turn. Okay, British movement. These guys are staying still because Richard's hoping he's going to do a shoot and scoot with them. Same uh, with the Cromwell troop, and he's still fiddling around with the Stuarts yes. who did a cross country Working dash. Just squeezing around, yeah, and he's fiddling around more, uh, and now he's going to do a shoot in. Okay, right. So, British shooting, and we'll probably save the Panther clash with uh, the, these Cromwells because they're not, they're not exactly hard to hit because they're aggressive. Um, so we'll do them last and we'll film that. Okay, so the Daimler did manage to get a hit on the 88. I failed my save, but luckily Richard rolled a 3 for his firepower. And likewise, same thing happened again. Second attempt ranging in by here, hit this guy, failed my save, and again a 3. So running my luck on these 50-50s. And then, was this a mistake? The paratroopers <laughs> opened up... Um, I just forgot about the, uh, so, the ground rule. Yeah, <laughs> six, uh, six of them opened up because they were in range and missed all their shots on the scouts. So they've opened their positions up. So that'll be a bit better for me next turn. So the one we are looking forward to, so uh, we'll just measure up our ranges and angles of shots because everyone's going to have different ones. So it'll be easier when we go to rolling the dice. Okay, so Richard's going to got a plan here. So he's going to fire the Firefly first and then he's doing smoke grounds with the Cromwells. So uh, it's long range, concealed, so he's hitting me on fives. Yay! You do have a lucky card, but I'm guessing you don't want to waste that yet. No. Nope. Okay, and then you have your four, uh, again, same um, thing, needing... Uh, fives. Fives, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, if the British dice have been atrocious so far. Uh, only Sherry can roll... Yeah, 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 only Sherry can roll sixes with these dice. Okay, so that draws the British turn to a close, so we're going to German turn two. Oh, I know it. Yeah, you do, should we do a shoot? Lots of scoops. Sh you, you, you do know, Richard, there's a dice tray that is provided that <laughs> you, can, you can use. Okay, so do your shooting scoops. So you, uh, we'll, we'll roll them all up, uh, so there's only two. So the Daimlers. Yes. Yep. And then the Cromwells. Yeah, so we've got this oh, and sixes. There's all my sixes out of the way. Obviously. Okay, right, so uh, don't, we'll do that and then we'll go into gym and turn two. Okay, so Richard's done his stuff. Uh, it's my turn two. I have no motivation. Oh no, I do. I have a pin down uh, AA team, and luckily they are rallying on a four, so 50 50 here. Yep. Yeah. And then two dice for reserves. No, so the Tigers will be coming in next turn, but not this turn. Okay, story of the movement. Uh, the Pumas have done a movement up to the hill. They won't be fine, so they'll be staying on the ground. Uh, the Panthers failed the Blitz, but then I just did a tactical move with them and kept them moving. These guys have stayed stationary. They're going to try and pick off a couple of the Cromwells they can see. These guys didn't attack, uh, so they can just about see up the road on this. Um, maybe, maybe two paratroopers. Uh, the SS have disembarked, 
and did a follow me but I had to use my lucky card because I failed the first roll and then the half tracks are moved up with them so they can fire so hopefully I can pin the paratroopers with a bit of luck pick a couple of them off and then maybe I can charge in with a few of them as well and push them away from this objective but we'll see we'll see so um, we will do the shooting uh, rolling on the panthers again and we'll keep them to the end Okay, so Super over well, yeah, but, here. Yeah, the are coming over. Yeah, so. they're coming over. So I've managed so, to pin the infantry with uh, all the half tracks, these ones included. I've managed to take out a 25 pounder with my AA guns, and these guys are yet to fire. So the way we looked at it, this end panther can see this Cromwell, and these two can only see that Cromwell. So we'll do this guy first. Go into here, so it is long range concealed, so it's going to be fours, five, sixes. So that's two shots coming up. None, and then we got the four onto the other Cromwell. And I got one hit on him, so no save. And he's dead. Oh, which one? Right, in the assault step, I did a shoot and scoop with the Panthers. Uh, they got to do it easier because of old hands and only one of them got stuck. The assault then went badly, uh, exactly five hits and I lost two of my guys over here so I was not able to get in. And I uh, very premature and I'm not used to aggressive infantry, I must say that. Um, but as you might realise now with uh, the rules people get wrong with all miniatures great and small, these guys are not going to be last standing because they will have a turn to get back into good spirits. So that's one to remember, everyone. Okay, so we have British, turn two. Okay, Richard's movement, paratroopers failed to unpin. Uh, the Daimlers have pulled back uh, to hide uh, and try and protect the 25 pounders. Uh, the Cromwell troop here has dashed to get into more cover here. And the Stuarts, all but one dashed to secure this objective and only one can actually fire. Uh, so the British going very defensive straight off here. Uh, so we have uh, British shooting. There's not a lot of shooting, uh, but um, so we'll just go straight through to that and I'll give you the recap. Okay, British shooting, the 25 pounders used their already ranged in marker and got rid of an 88. So this guy is last standing and I will need to move to actually be able to see some stuff. And over here, the Stuart managed to pop one of the 250 half tracks. And that is it. So we're going into German turn three and my Tigers are coming on. Okay, so if anyone spotted, Richard has not fired the paratroopers, he now has, and he's killed two more of the SS, so I'm last standing, and he's bailed one of the scout cars. Hopefully I can get them in, and uh, have one last hurrah with that lot, so uh, we'll see what I can do over here. And now we're going into German turn 3. Okay, so uh, I have uh, my motivation. So I have a, a bailed out half track that gets back in on a uh, four. Uh, he does not. And then I have the pinned SS Grenadiers uh, who unpin. And then I have the pinned 88s uh, that unpin. And then my last stand. So on the Grenadiers, pass. And then on the 88, pass. And I'll, can't call that rolling and I'd already moved the Tigers they have moved here so I will be doing a follow me with them and then I'll be doing the rest of the movement okay story of movement I had three blitz moves to do and I failed all of them uh, one of them actually needed to be a four up so that was the difficult one uh, so um, these guys failed so they're gonna stay where they are I've changed my mind with the movement these guys have gone behind the houses uh, the two other Panthers are here, haven't failed their blitz, so they've done a tactical, but managed to get in the woods. Uh, these guys failed their blitz, so they've uh, drawn back over. Uh, half tracks, uh, the infantry unit has got in, and he's pulled back here, and these guys are staying here for now. So we have some shooting. It's going to be very difficult with all my failed blitzes, but uh, we'll try my best. Okay, so shooting-wise, I've managed to pick off two more of the paratroopers. And uh, these guys then failed a shooting scoot. So, uh, yeah, that's where we end that. So, we are now going into British turn three. Uh, British start up step. Uh, the British paratroopers are still pinned. Oh no, this is first platoon. These, these historically always stay pinned throughout every game they've played. <laughs> I'm sorry, Richard. I, I didn't realise these were first platoon. But yeah, this is, this is the curse of first platoon. Um, ambush is not coming in. 
and reserves aren't coming in either. No, so needed. Yeah, needed. So we have British Movement. Okay, British Movement, uh, the Cromwell Troop uh, with their Firefly has, has moved here, uh, staying out of reach of everything, and the Stuarts are moving to engage the half tracks. And the Daimler over here has moved to hide, uh, which is very desperate for reserves at this point in time. So we have British Movement, and now we have British Shooting. Okay, British Shooting, the 25 pounders are ranged in by here. Uh, got two hits, uh, but luckily I passed my armor saves. Uh, over here, uh, the Stuarts are getting rid of the Raki uh, uh, platoons uh, transport. Killed one and bailed another, so they're in a bit of trouble. And that was it for British Shooting, so we are moving into German Turn 4 and all of their last stands that they need to be doing. Okay, so the bailed out half tracks first, so two dice. Uh, needing first so the far one is not in and the other one is also not in so there's another last stand to add to the list of things and then we have the last stand so the half tracks uh, that should be enough to make them run away I'll double check the infantry inside oh well that's it anyway and then the 88 is a good so um, there we go so don't need to check because the infantry running away the half tracks will run away with them so it's quite a lot of points you've built up there. Okay, German movement. I passed a blitz with my Tigers to enable them to get to where they are. Uh, these guys just did a regular move but I failed to move with the HQ so he's going to stay where he is. And the two Pumas have moved tactically. Uh, these guys have just done a dash and all passed their cross checks and then my 250 scout troop did a cross country dash to get out of sight and secure the objective a little bit more because they're bullying them over here for now. So we have shooting. Alright, so everything got directed at the 25 pounders. I pinned them, but no kills, um, unfortunately. Uh, but things are moving in position and they are pinned, uh, but again, a bit ropey. So we're going into British turn four. Okay, British turn four. We have the British paratroopers attempting to rally for the first time this game. They do? Yes! And then the 25 pounders. They yes. do as well. So everything rallies. Ambush coming in. Two sacks. <laughs> <laughs> Two sacks, I think. We will be back after the break. Okay, for the British, no ambush. And most importantly, no reserves. No reserves. In next turn. Okay, right. All to play for. So, British movement. Okay, British movement, paratroopers are moved, uh, fail to follow me, they're not the most motivated paratroopers. Stuarts are also moving around, and then the Cromwell uh, troop is moving, uh, bearing in mind they have to have the Sherman plodding along behind because it's so slow. And that is it for British movement, so we have British shooting, and the only things I are firing are the 25 pounders, so are you going to fire direct or are you yeah. going to repeat your bombardment? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to... Uh, fire direct. Okay, but bear in mind, the only one you can see the yep. pumas are that one. Yeah, you're right. I did block yep. it well enough. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna fire direct. Yes. Well, that's two hits. Two hits. Uh, oh, wait. No, you need a six. Then. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, can, I can bounce them on sixes. Come on, sweet sixes. No, so fire powers. Threes. There we go, dead pumas. And then we go into German turn five. Okay, luckily for me, I have no motivations, cause, oh no, I do, I have a last stand on the 88. Great, I'm glad I don't wanna remember that one, so. Who's braver than paratroopers? Three, is enough. Thank you very much, <laughs> um, Third Reich last stand. Yeah. Good lad, so we have movement to do. German movement. The eight, no, the two centimetre light AAs are moving. Honestly, if these were the half tracks, they'd have been so much better. So they're moving slowly this way. Um, 88 has remained still. Yeah, he, he did pass his last stand, well done him. This is where the big tanks have ended up. And then these are the other big tanks have ended up here. And then these scouts are hiding. So, Losing the Pumas wasn't great, uh, but 
at war. So <laughs> we'll uh, do shooting and we'll see where we end up. Okay, shooting step. Uh, the Tigers managed to peel off one of the 25 pounders with their big guns. Um, maybe we should have done that with the Panthers as well. Uh, and then these guys failed to hit uh, the Cromwell uh, up there. And the 88 didn't get a hit as well. So I am going to charge in uh, with the Tigers. So there should only be one defensive fire shot. Uh, well, two from that 25 pounder. So hopefully I have a decent odds of getting in on this. Okay, so what a weird assault uh, just occurred. I went in, the 25 pounder missed both shots, I then failed to hit, and then the 25 pounders failed to counter attack. So basically, the 25 pounder that was there is dead, but this guy, because he was over six inches away, is okay, so he is still alive for now. Um, so there we go, and we have a tea break, and then we'll get into British turn five. Okay, so we have a pinned 25 pounder and a last stand on the 25 pounder, all on threes. So first to unpin, he unpins. Now does he run away? He does. Oh. Okay, and is your ambush coming in? He has to make the decision before the reserves yeah, come in, yeah? That's, if, the, if one of the reserves are coming in, no. <laughs> Sorry, if the reserves are going, yes, the reserves are coming in, maybe no, I don't know, um, oh shit, you could actually, right, it's going to be some thinking, I think. Okay, right, we'll have an hour break. <laughs> British movement, paratroopers have moved and finally done a follow me, Stuarts have ended up here still wheeling their way round. Um, the Cromwell troop moved here with a successful blitz move to get them there. And the reserve Cromwells are moved and moved into the woods, so they can't be seen either. So, after where there are quite a few shots. So, what we will do is we will record what happens with the M10 Achilles because that will be very interesting. So, that's all the shooting is in this corner again. So, we have British shooting. Okay, so the Firefly is missed over here onto the Tigers. And then we have long range shots, no concealment. So, that's four shots from the M10 Achilles onto the Tigers, is it? Yeah. Onto the Tigers, so that is hitting me on fives, because the Tigers are careful. Oh, are the Panthers aggressive? You should be hitting them on fours. Yeah, I'll give the Panthers. Okay, Panthers it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, so there's two on each. Uh, so my luckily my armour does go up to ten for the range, so I have the one who isn't my HQ. Uh, so bounces oh, one, one and one's pen, and then the HQ. Ah, uh, so it's basically two pens on each, and it's three plus firepower. So the one who's not my HQ, dead, and the one who is my HQ, it's dead. Oh. Uh, so does my HQ swap to the Tiger Tank? He does not. So I have no HQ left. So no. Wow. No, there we go. <laughs> German motivation, finally the 88 has failed and he's run away. These guys are still moving. The M10s did do a shoot and scoop, but one of them has got stuck. But it doesn't matter because the Tigers have moved for cover behind the farmhouse. And these guys have moved down the road a little bit more, just so I can maybe get shots on the, the unit as well. And these guys remain still, so I'm very boxed in. As we just said, the hunter has now become the hunted. So <laughs> let's see if I can finally pick off this final troop, which has been bugging me all game and uh, maybe make some more mo adventurous moves. Okay, the Panthers missed, because the Panthers suck. Uh, the Tigers, though, got one hit. Uh, Richard did swap it onto the uh, Cromwell, and the Cromwell's gone, so that's a five plus last time. But you do still have your lucky cards. Yep. So uh, I shouldn't have reminded you about that. <laughs> so now we're going into British, British turn five. British turn then, so we have the motivation. So, the only motivation you have is your last stand on your Sherman Firefly. Come on, boys. Which you fail. Lucky. You're using the lucky. Go yeah. on then. And is that a reroll, is it? A reroll, yeah. No. So he drives away. And now we have reserves, so you have four dice to, reserve, to roll this time. Come on, let's get two of these, please. 
So you will get one at least. Oh, good. British movement. Uh, the Churchills have come on and are moving up, uh, putting their territory towards the Tigers so they can't be uh, rear-ended. <laughs> Daimlers are moving up as well. And these guys are staying still, mainly because this guy just failed his um, cross-check. Uh, and this is where we have over here the Stuarts is split up. So they're going scout hunting and the paratroopers moving in with the help of a cross here, uh, a follow me. So we have British shooting and the 250 scouts aren't looking so happy anymore. Okay, okay so we've done the shooting because only the Stuarts fired. They managed to take out the uh, MG half track because I did a swap. So, no last stands for me in my turn. I, I think it's turn six, I might be wrong, but when, when I actually do the thumbnails, that'll be right. So, uh, whatever turn it is. But we know that Richard's rolling five dice next turn for reserve. So, we're going into German turn, whatever it is. German movement. Richard's making me cautious now, and I don't like it. So... Panthers have just pivoted their turrets because he's actually presented me with an opportunity here and the scout cars have done a tactical around the arse of this, well not arse, side of uh, the Stuart. Tigers did a blitz move, I think that might be one of my first successful blitzes of the game uh, and they've angled it so I can go for the Daimler's dingo combo oh, but the big nasty guns uh, like that. So basically the Third Reich is down to using 88 to hunt scout cars and hide from everything else but maybe they should have done that in the first place so we've got shoot in and we'll see how well I can do okay so the Tigers <laughs> kill the Daimler and the Dingo so the that scout troop is last standing and then pass the shooting scoot to go back hiding Panthers missed everything and then failed their shooting scoot so yeah that, that's why I, Panthers are cursed for me <laughs> and um, these guys actually managed to bail uh, a Stuart so, there we go. So we're going to British turn potentially six. British movement, all reserves are finally on, but they're all over here. So Richard's decided out of the Cromwell HQ, attempt to have a pop shot over here. We'll have to check the range to make sure it's all legal. Stuarts are remain still. This guy has pivoted his turret, and these guys have moved all apart from the Piats. Um, the Dingo is sticking around, so it's going to pose a threat to the objectives. Churchills are moving to go for tiger hunting, and these guys are moving out of the woods, apart from the Firefly, who's bogged down. So these tigers are going to have to do some dancing at some point. Uh, so there we go, and now we have British shooting. Okay, so Rich is chuckling to himself, and too rightly. So the two Piats managed to bail the half tracks. Unfortunately, Richard didn't follow through up with an infantry team because he would have just got them. The Stuarts then managed to kill one and double bail another, but I passed my motivation. These Stuarts then managed to get two hits on these Panthers. One of them hit my side, and I rolled a one. So um, luckily, it was long range, so I equaled. Uh, but then he failed his firepower, and this is how much. Panthers are really grinding my gears right now. So I am going into German potentially turn seven and I'm just dancing around, r r waiting to hit stuff now. So let's see if I can do it. Motivation and movement recap here. So one of the Panthers has moved his turret to go for the HQ Cromwell. These two are going to be firing at the Stuarts. This guy has got back in and has not run away. And then the two Tigers have moved down here because they can get nice open shots on the Cromwells. So, oh, and I might as well move these guys because they might do something at some point. Um, so, again, roll, in a, a roll it down to dice rolls here and, and hopefully I can sacrifice something quickly so I can get some good rolls again. Okay, so these guys have ended up here and this guy has moved tactical back to here just in case that dingo does something. Now these Panthers have done something. This guy managed to kill a Cromwell HQ. I know, right? I know. And then one of them managed to take out a Stuart. And that, now, when the Germans realise they need to hit stuff, they're doing quite well. Um, and this guy got a couple of hits on the Stuart, but he, he bounced them. And unfortunately the Tigers, with their gambit over here, missed the Cromwells. Rolling on two dice, a four in total, which is not enough. So we come down to this. 
If Richard can kill my Tigers, he wins the game. And if I can kill his Cromwells, or the Stuarts, I win the game. And he's got a lot of 17-pounders over there. In fact, two, three, but basically two of them basically need a, a blitz move. And then to hit me. So, we're going to British turn seven. I'll take a photo of the M10s and then there's no motivations. Oh. Nah, nah, no, no, no motivations. I'm pretty sure these guys don't need to do a last stand because there's two in good spirits over there, so they're good, I think. Okay. So we go into British turn seven, potentially. Okay, so we'll start with the blitz move on the M10s. So can they do it? They can't. So they'll have to tactically do it. No, they're not, they're going to stay where they are, are they? Probably. Okay, see. right, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so the Stuarts are moving in, closing in on the scout cars. Um, and an infantry team is following through this time in case it's just bailed. Uh, the uh, Churchills are going on to the side of the Tigers and they could do it. Because uh, the M10s fail their blitz, um, Rich is trying to retreat them into the woods, one did, and then basically doing the same. Tried to get the Firefly out to fire at the Tigers, but failed the cross check again. And we did roll the last down for the Dingo, and as you can see, he's not here. He's, uh, well, he had almost a home run here, but he just gave up, so it's down to shooting. <laughs> I, I honestly put a little bet on everyone, I reckon the Churchills are going to do it, so we'll film them last. Um, but we'll do the Stuarts and stuff off camera because it's easy. Nice and simple, the Piats did it. The Piats got rid of the scout cars, Nice. well the Romanian scout cars. So we have two shots hitting on fours for the Churchills. We have two hits. And it's 80-10. Oh, I don't know if I have yet. So it's 80-10, my side is nice. eight. So first Tiger, it gets a six. And the next one gets a six. Bong bong. Bong bong. So we go into German turn potentially eight. Okay. Movement. I had no last stands because everything's run away. Uh, these guys have done a tactical moving over. One of them's failed. Oh, I could have done, done a cross here, but uh, okay, never mind. But uh, maybe in two more turns they might be in range or something. Luckily these Panthers are close enough to the terrain to ignore the concealment and they can get these two, so the unit leader has moved to potentially finish them off. Tigers, one of them could see the Cromwells, although it's going to be long range concealed, so the other one has moved as well, so he can uh, get a shot as well. So three Tiger shots under the Cromwells on the edge of the forest. And there we go. So it's all down to the dice again. This is how the shooting ended up. I killed one Stuart and bailed another. Tigers missed again for the second turn in a row, unfortunately, exposing them to, well, the M10 might need to move a bit closer to the edge, maybe, but we'll see. So, into British motivations for their turn eight, does this Stuart get back in? So what is the Stuart remounting on? That should be a four. Yeah, yeah. remount four. So he's back in. Okay, so, we're down to movement and trying to finish off the game. Yes, right. Okay, so the paratroopers and universal carriers have made it onto the objective. The Stuarts have run away. Churchills have all moved to the rear. M10s have finally passed a blitz move. And so what and a cross check. So one of them has done is got a clear shot, other one's concealed. The Firefly has passed a cross check, so has a clear shot. This Cromwell failed, and this Cromwell is running for the objective. Interesting. So, shoot in and I think this could be it. It's happened. I've lost a tiger, but this tiger is bouncing all the hits off him or not getting hit by M10s, so to speak. So, I'm not getting the Stuarts anytime soon because I, unless I can box them in that corner over there. Uh, first of all, I need to secure my objective. Uh, so it's getting very, very ropey, but uh, this is a very fun game so far. So, um, yep, I have a last stand to pass first on my Tiger. So I'm not going to flippantly just roll this because there's got some weight behind this. So as long as I don't get one, 
F5. So I'm still in the game. So let's do some movement. Okay, my movement. Panthers are going on to secure the objective. I've got two of them on it. This gentleman has kindly done a cross check to come along as well. And these guys here are in range finally to shoot. And they didn't have to move. This guy, however, is moving to try and secure this objective. And my tiger isn't moving because I do have a short range concealed, concealed shot. Concealed. Concealed. Concealed shots onto the Sherman uh, Firefly and I can splash onto the remaining Cromwell there. So maybe, just maybe. Okay. And now we have the shooting phase. Okay, so all my shooting, I've only managed to kill one of the paratroopers and they'll be digging in very, very soon and they'll be able to go to ground, so maybe even more difficult. Though I could assault them, but they do have two piats. So let's not, let's not be hasty. So they still have their two piats and that's why I'm not doing it. The tiger, however, has managed to bail the firefly. So, bail the firefly. So if he does not get back in, it's last stand time. So try and get the firefly back in first. No. Oh! <laughs> and then a five plus last stand. Game ends. Yeah, and I believe that's right because they weren't in command yeah. at the start of the turn. I believe that is right. That's a bit stupid. We'll, we'll uh, a check. We'll, out. Yeah, we'll, we'll double check the rules, but I believe that's right because normally. Um, if they were in command at the start of the turn, but technically they were, we'll have, have a look. So, I have managed to get hold of one of the more experienced people I know, i.e. Tom, and he says in this case, this is this unit is not viable, so they will run away. And therefore, handing me very sweaty win. <laughs> this is like FIFA when you score, like a very sneaky goal at the end but this has probably been one of my favourite games I've played because things we're doing things I shouldn't be doing I'm having big tanks having to go out to scout cars Panthers are starting to work sometimes but my man of the match is going to have to go to the Tigers because they somehow survived for a few turns on their own the funniest thing is probably seeing Churchill's going around flanking them, trying to get rear shots. And then finally it was the Tiger who got the kill on... Oh, I think the Tigers got rid of the one Cromwell troop. Yeah. So this is the second Cromwell troop. And the Panthers have managed to kill one Cromwell, two Stuarts, and I think another Cromwell from another troop. So they need to pull their weight a bit more. And Richard? Man uh, yeah, it's, it's kept, kept me in the game, really. Yeah, well, wow. the M10s in one turn took out the Panthers, as we saw, and took out another Tiger. And luckily they're SS Tigers, so they stuck around. And yeah. before everything, when I was still waiting for everything, I think I popped them on the, the team. Well, I got the other, uh, the Cromwells in, and uh, they kept me in. But yeah, I, I'm a bit gutted that my stupid mistake of, of, of getting red line fever, <laughs> uh, white line fever, or whatever, to, to try and nip that objective. I Like, yeah. So learning, I, I, uh, but I really enjoyed this. Probably my favorite. I said my favorite game because it was just just chaos and defending and then attacking. But probably I'm really kicking myself at the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I I definitely think um I I didn't win that game. I, I think Richard, you definitely lost it. You had me on the ropes. I was clinging in there. Probably but for I, I, I think I uh, think um, we did a silly mistake at the end. Yeah, fun. yeah, I think at some point you were a bit more passive when you should be more aggressive. Yeah. And unfortunately I could see where you where you're going, but if you just kept in there you would have had another turn. And back. and I will roll ones eventually with our tiger tank. But yeah, awesome game. And uh, you've seen what my opinion is on the SS with having an SSDD, these guys need to be 10 fours and need to be in the formation because as soon as these guys went, I was ropey. Now, I mentioned maybe a box, another box of Cromwells, but the list would be different again. Yeah. Do you what do you think of the DD uh, starter set? I think it's fun. Um, I, yeah, it just seems weird to yeah, not like it's not a super. It's a very like. Um, uh, vulnerable list when you start losing things and yeah. it really relies on the support but it's fun and it does lots of different things I've, I've really enjoyed playing with it lots yeah. of toys but 
Yeah, you think they just need a bit more core, don't they? Yeah, it about seem seems to be all of the starter sets need a bit more core. I think the Americans are the most solid because you've got your HQ, a unit of seventy five Shermans, a unit of seventy six, and your Stuarts. And I think they're the only ones. Although the British one does have four units, but the problem is, is one of them is just one, and then you got two units which are just three, and then you got to remember the last stand on said core is a five up. Yeah, and and like so, I just I love the sets, I love the deals. I think if I, maybe if I was making them just big as we get here, I'd probably include a stronger core and maybe not so many fancy toys because I think I'd buy the starter set as a base and then I'd go, oh I want some M10s or yeah. some eighty eights or, or whatever and then or some tigers and then I'd buy that as well and I'd probably spend more money while sort of having a sort of a weird list to get everything in. It's sort of been too generous, isn't mm. it? I'd rather have the core. Alright, so that's our review. So so far Vavin SS has got one point against this name. <laughs> for fun not for um, anything else but there we go so the we're going to do a game against each other the Vav and SS have got two more games left and the British have got two more games left so hopefully the British will sneak up on that table ranking oh maybe we could do it like proper like VP scored as well yeah, yeah. so then I'll be a true ranking but obviously the mission's going to be different so but that'll be interesting to see at the end so we'll have a scoreboard Okay, so that's me done, and me Richard done, and we had a lengthy review this time, since hopefully um, we, this will interest newer players into the game, showing what you can achieve with just a simple starter set and two more purchases. Cause you, get, you get your rule book in the starter set as well, which is great. So you get your command cards, and going on from the command cards, you really can create a lot more flavour in your lists, a lot more flavour, because um, we just use one card, the lucky card, there's a lot more in there and you know I think the units they have asked you to increase are on the cheaper end of the scale so that's probably why so I think go, looking at the total cost is it's not going to be too bad so signing off again everyone stay safe still still out there but uh, yeah so I hope you enjoyed again feedback and if this was wrong, it's Tom's fault. <laughs> it's Tom's fault. But yeah, again and again we mentioned again about the the, the video with all miniatures great and small. <laughs> but it just for some reason it just got really confusing. Um, where Richard was adamant from the start that it was game. It's just I wanted to be sure because I didn't want to ruin a good game by having a rule wrong. So um, there we go. So again, everyone stay safe and stay tuned to the next D-Day uh, starter set battle report. <laughs>